G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to Cancer Free Gameplay. Yes, that's correct. Recently the Harrier GR1 was moved to 10.0, and this has made a very, very positive change on the battle ratings below. This here is the G91R4, and this is one of four little matches that I'm going to be showing you. Um, basically, this particular change has helped a lot of planes. The way 8.7 used to be played was actually really nice. It was basically very slow and methodic, and the Harrier in a way ruined it to make it very fast paced. What it did was it threw everyone in a situation where they were either heavily on the defensive or having to kill as many Harriers as possible early on in the game to avoid being S rammed later. Now in the background here this is the G91R4 and like I said it has been freed up very very beautifully by no Harriers. And for this uh, you can really actually you can actually see it shine in its own environment and in this particular case I've put four aim 9 bs on the uh, plane I kind of wish I could take two because as you can see this plane is very very heavy with those four uh, aim 9 bs it's actually struggling to sit or, or to try and make this a5 saber overshoot I've had to basically pull out all the stops early on in the game and then he makes a critical error he doesn't sort of sit on his air brake long enough but he also has a guy behind him as well so you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't now i haven't played the g91s in a very long time in fact i haven't played anything with 50 cals on a jet in a very long time so i'm a little bit rusty here but you can see basically how i'm able to start dogfighting the uh hunter there sweeps up the f86a5 saber quite quickly and the av8 is soon to follow now in this particular match, I'm in a full up tier, but I don't think that really makes a difference. In this case here, I uh, I don't really know if that was going to be a kill steal or not, but I didn't want this guy to get back to base. It looked like he could have pulled out of that dive and headed straight back, so I'm not really taking any chances, but um, you know, if I did anything wrong, you can roast me in the comments. So, back to the gameplay and back to the sort of situation that has been created here. We're seeing a lot of 9.7 to 8.7 games again, and for me this is only a positive thing. I really like this battle rating, and I really like the methodical pace that uh, this particular battle rating entails. It's not really a situation of uh, just going in and picking off whatever you can. There is a little bit of thought to playing this particular uh, era, or this sort of battle rating. You don't go in and look for as many kills as possible. You try and you know strategize. You prioritize and for me that is where a lot of the fun from 8.7 was ruined by the Harrier and that's simply due to its high climb rate its good top speed and the SRAMs now that it's at that high battle rating it has to look for those chaotic situations and trust me at this at that particular tier you will find plenty of situations where you get a clusterfuck like a furball or something like that especially with MiGs being able to you know turn fight and all that sort of stuff um, as well as F4 Phantoms that are trying to uh, have some fun with MiG-21s. Uh, so you do have that option there for the Harriers, and it's not broken overpowered. It is slowly turning into a gimmick, which is uh, funny enough exactly what I predicted on the dev server, uh, and thankfully it has become a reality. The Harriers are no longer the top dog, uh, which is a very, very good thing. Instead, other planes can sort of fit into that uh, position, but not a single plane exerting all of its force at once, which is really nice. The next sort of game that we're going to have a look at here is the MiG-21F. Now, I quite like the MiG-21F. It is a very hard plane to fly because it doesn't have much ammunition and its missiles are not very great, nor is the uh, energy retention in a turn, so you do have to be pretty uh, well disciplined. And you can see that I'm like missing my shots, doing all this sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the air brake off, uh, sorry, the afterburner off, and sit behind this guy because the FJ just let me get behind him um, and I think he's also a little bit heavy from aim 9 bs so in this particular circumstance you can see that the MiG-21 F is very strong but uh, against things like a Harrier I would consider it fairly evenly matched against things like an F-100 I would consider it fairly evenly matched and of course you have things like the Lightning um, and only a battle rating above you have things like the T-2 the Harriers and uh, the F-104s as well. So you do have a fairly even competition to iron out the benefits of things like 9.7s, but at the same time, the 8.7s aren't sort of lost 
without uh, without some form of defense. I understand that things like an A5 Sabre are going to have troubles against things like the uh, the MiG-21, the English Electric Lightning, um, but unfortunately Gaijin doesn't really want to dep uh, depress. Does does seem to want to depress me, but they do want to keep the battle ratings compressed, which is, you know, if I had it my way, these things would all be 10-0, but unfortunately the way Gaijin has decided to do things, I guess we just have to sort of make the best of a bad situation. But it isn't all gloom and doom, it's actually not too bad, especially when you have multiple 9-7s on your team. And that's kind of what we've had with the quantitative matchmaker, which isn't too bad a thing actually. It's made sure that there are only uh, a set number of certain BR vehicles, especially in full up tiers and full down tiers. These things are really, really crucial, and Gaijin has basically nailed it in that respect. Although, if you do end up with, say, an English Electric Lightning on the, on the enemy team, and you're in a MiG-15, uh, you can basically kiss trying to shoot that guy down goodbye, um, and what you should do instead is go for ground targets, but that's a small thing that can be kind of ironed out with uh, a bit of BRD compression. So, the next game we're going to have a look at here is a 10.0 battle, and I'm in the English Electric Lightning. Now, we do have plenty of Harriers on board here, but there are T2s, and there are other things to balance it out. Now, notice that there are still A7Ds on the uh, enemy team, and there are still A7Ds at 9.7, um, and we'll get into that later. The, one of the matches that I will show is an A7D match. Uh, not particularly impressive, but still sort of demonstrates what you can get away with. Um, I still think that thing deserves its AIMS 9 js removed. It is a ground attacker after all. It has phenomenal performance in that respect. Uh, and I think it should be sort of limited in its air-to-air -air capabilities, especially considering that it does have those uh, brute cannons, the uh, GAL 13s in pods, and it also has a Vulcan with it. So there are still plenty of options for this particular plane, but things like the English Electric Lightning, things like the MiG-21F uh, and the F-100D are all very, very well suited to this new battle rating without the Harrier. It allows them to sort of take their time a little bit and get some get some kills basically. I would consider BR 8.7 to 9.7 HIV Aladdin, which if you guys don't get it, it's a reference to uh, a movie called The Dictator. You should go and watch it if you uh, are of the age to uh, to watch it legally, or at least with uh, with some with some parental guidance if you're under the age of 18, of course. Um, but regardless uh, from that tangent, we're moving on to some J29F gameplay. Now, I haven't played this thing since it basically came out, uh, and I noticed that the J29 sort of fell out of favor when 9.7 became a thing. Now, I am, uh, I think, once again in a full up tier, or at least uh, a partial up tier, and you can see that I'm still doing fairly well. Even though that is an F11, uh, which does sit at 9.0, it is basically a 9.7 performing plane. It's, it, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I don't think it should be 9.0. I think it's way too fast. It, it's basically supersonic in a straight line uh, at, I think, 2,000 meters. So you've got you know, plenty of engine power and I guess it's just a little weird to play, which makes it a very, sort of, not very low tier, but definitely under tiered in my personal opinion. Now, in this particular circumstance here, I am going up against an A4B. Now, the A4B uh, should be fairly easy to fight, but uh, because I have a lot of energy retention in this thing, uh, I managed to overshoot. Now, notice how no one has basically come out from the middle of nowhere and yoinked this kill with an SRAM. That is one of the things that I found really frustrating with the Harriers being at such a low battle rating. This particular battle rating thrives on dogfights, and low-speed dogfights at that, something like sub-600. Now, sub-600, you're not going to be able to dodge an SRAM no matter what plane you're in, unless you have flares, I suppose, but even then, it's fairly difficult to do so. So, having the ability to actually dogfight at low speed without the threat of a Harrier is absolutely beautiful, and the J29D is one of those planes that really thrives in that sort of situation. So is the A4B, and so are the A5 and F35 Sabres. Notice how I managed to get the crit on the A4B there, just as the F35 comes in for a couple of shots, and the F11 comes back in for another dogfight. Now, the F11 is basically bleeding his speed, he's not playing his plane correctly, uh, and he probably will get shot down if he doesn't keep an eye out. The F-35 Sabre here is playing his plane correctly, and he is basically trying to go for a dogfight. However, he's sort of put himself in a weird situation here. Um, he is defensive flying actually quite well, uh, considering, and I decide to break off to try and get my hands on this F-11. 
I'm going to turn my attention to him and try and get him to overshoot so that maybe the MiG-15 can come and uh, join in the fun. The Shenyang F5 is another plane that's sort of been uh, relieved by this little battle rating, but unfortunately this particular uh, gentleman, this, this flying man, this, this magnificent man in his flying machine, uh, unfortunately crashes into the ground due to compression. Now, this particular situation here is one of the situations, like I said, that would never have occurred without the uh, Harrier being removed from this battle rating. I think now is the best time to play an 8.7 in a very, very long time. There are no F-104s, there is no bullshit, there is, however, this one thing. Well, actually, I take back that there is no bullshit, because this is the only bullshit that you have to experience. This is the A7D. This is probably the most broken plane to come into the game since the Harrier, um, and the most sort of underused broken plane to come into the game. Um, there's a guy who you might know called Copsy. He's, uh, he's a he's a buddy of mine. Uh, he's an absolutely wonderful bloke. He's very, very funny, um, but he's also extremely good at the game, and he's very good at abusing things that are subtly overpowered. Um, I mean... I don't know. I guess you can call this thing subtly overpowered. It is It is very, very strong. It has that insane head-on firepower with the GAL 13s. It has two AIM-9Js. It has RWR. It should probably have a radar, but I think that's a ground radar. I'm not really sure. Someone let me know in the comments. Uh, and it also has flares, which make it a really, really strong plane for uh, 9.7. I think if this plane had its AIM-9Js removed, like I said earlier, I think it would be okay for a 9.7. I heard someone say to me yesterday that if it had its AIM-9Js and went to 10.0 instead, uh, that would be a better compromise. And honestly, I'm open to both of them. I think both of those solutions are fairly viable uh, because the AIM-9Js are still fairly good for top tier. However, the performance of this plane will basically make it a little bit lacking, which would force it to do ground attack, which is what the plane is. It's a ground attacker, it's not a fighter. Um, unlike the F-8, uh, I think it's Crusader, F8 Crusader. I think I think that's the plane, uh, which is a fighter. Uh, the one with the uh, flaps that aren't really flaps, but are the the wings sort of tilting. Um, that plane is a bit of a fighter, and I think it has the same 20 mils that the F100 gets. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm really not familiar with this sort of stuff. I'm still sort of researching this, if you will. Now, in the case of the A7 Corsair, it has Basically the same performance as the Shenyang F5 in terms of its uh, sort of straight line and rough turning capabilities at low altitude. Of course, as you get to high altitudes, that afterburner will uh, absolutely blow it out of the water. As well as the forward firepower, uh, the Shenyang F5 just does not have in the realms of that. Um, you can also see the Shenyang has a fair amount of energy retention if you don't turn and burn. But what makes this thing very strong is the weapons. Honestly... Like I said, that's a very, there's a very simple solution to making this thing not broken. Uh, this and the Yak-38 and the Yak-38M are the only things at this particular battle rating that I would consider absolute bullshit. Uh, these planes are basically it. If you were to, say, remove those planes, you would have an absolute blast of a battle rating. I think it would be very, very close to perfect. But for now, I think this is as good as we're going to get. You are still open to dogfights, still open to those fairly low speeds, provided that these particular planes aren't saturated in the matchmaker. And that is something that if Gaijin works on, I have nothing to complain about, about 8.7 to 9.7. Maybe the Javelin, uh, being at too high a battle rating, should go to 8.3 8, in my opinion, just because it's not particularly strong. But apart from that, I really can't complain. This battle rating has improved massively in the last couple of uh, days, and if you want to play a 9.3 or a 9.7, now is a very, very good time to do so. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.